I'm going to be talking to Dr. Julia Wellner, who's an associate professor, College of Earth and As Atmospheric Sciences at the University of Houston, about a project she's involved with, the International Thwaites Glacier Collaboration. So welcome to the interview, Julia. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Now, I don't know anything about this project. Uh, could you give us an overview of it, please? Certainly. Um, Thwaites Glacier is in Antarctica and is one of the world's um, fastest changing glaciers. We can talk a bit more about why it's important, but many scientists around the world recognized that it um, was changing and we needed to understand it better. So the United States and the United Kingdom are partners in a joint project. It's the largest joint project between the countries for Antarctic science ever. We're spending about $50 million to study how Thwaites is behaving. We're working there both on land and at sea and in computer modeling um, over a period of five years. Um, and we are approaching the end of that time period now. Now, my understanding is that the water uh, is warming and the glacier is retreating. And this glacier is so large that if it were to uh, collapse uh, and melt, uh, that it could all by itself, it could raise the global sea levels about two feet. Uh, have I got that information correct? Approximately, yes. Um, Thwaites Glacier has the potential to contribute about 65 centimeters to global sea level rise. Um, so yes, about two feet. and. That's not going to happen instantly, but it does have the potential to happen rapidly, at least rapidly on the geologic time scale. Already, Waits Glacier currently contributes about 4% per year to annual sea level rise. So that's a lot for a single glacier, but it's not alarming. The reason there's so much interest in Thwaites Glacier is what you just mentioned, that warm water is reaching the base. Antarctic glaciers are resting in contact with the ocean. So they're very different than what you might imagine in the Himalayas or the Alps where ice is up in the mountain. Ice in the Antarctic is in contact with the water. And of course, water is liquid. That means it's above freezing. The ice is solid, it's below freezing. And so that thermal difference right there is what controls the retreat of the ice. Warm water has been found to be impinging or reaching up to the base of the ice. Overall, Antarctic air is very cold. It's very cold in the air. We're not melting ice from the top, it stays frozen doesn't rain, it just snows. But if we warm the water underneath the ice, just a tiniest bit, then we're changing that thermal balance and melting the ice from the bottom and destabilizing the ice from that side. 65 centimeters might not sound like a lot, but that's a glacier the size of Florida. And so what that means is that's gonna spread out around the planet. Right. So uh, now you, you said this uh, wasn't alarming. Uh, and uh, at the same time, I, I, when I was doing my background research, it, it said that the uh, one of the reasons why this is important or Thwaites is important is the potential for mo uh, more, uh, more rapid uh, yeah. change than expected. Could you address that, please? Absolutely. So what I said is it's not alarming right now. But I certainly agree with you. Thwaites has the potential to be um, very catastrophic. So all of West Antarctica, which includes Thwaites, is marine-based ice. And what that means is that once retreat will start, it will get worse. So some places um, where something changes, it will change a little bit and then stabilize. The retreat of West Antarctic or marine-based glaciers um, will be uh, positive feedbacks. Once it starts going a little, it will go more, and then it will go more. And Thwaites Glacier is a prime example 
where as we start to step back, Thwaites will be in deeper and deeper water, making it harder and harder for it to get its footing. It's like a skier going downhill. And if they start to lose their balance, they're not going to find a place to rest until they get to the very bottom of the hill. Thwaites is like that. Once it starts to lose its footing, it will just get worse and worse. Uh, now you've been at this a couple of years. Uh, what uh, are some of the you know one or two uh, sort of uh, key bits of information that you gathered uh, that you were a little bit surprised about? Sure. You know the International Thwaites Glacier Collaboration has over a hundred scientists working on it. The project I'm working on is the offshore geology, and so some people study the ice from the top. Some people study it from satellites. What we do is we work in the ocean, right at the margin of the ice to understand that interface between the two. You mentioned earlier that the water has been found to be warming right next to the ice. And what that means is we've actually measured water temperatures and our colleagues and our teams have found that warming signal. My students and I take sediment cores, just like geologists in the oil industry or any other type of geologist. We don't work on ice, we work on sediments. And we take those sediments to find out, was that warm water there in the past? And we are able to look at um, the chemistry and the microfossils in those sediments and get a hint of, when was the warm water there in the past? And one thing that we can say is, at least on a short time scale, this is new. The warm water has just started to impinge in this area in recent decades. That's a surprise. One of the questions I, I always ask scientists uh, when we're talking about climate is, uh, do you have low confidence, medium confidence, or high confidence in the science that you're undertaking and the results that you're getting? That's a great question because I think it's really important for conveying to the public what we know about the climate and the potential change. I and all of the colleagues I have, every scientist I know has exceptionally high confidence in the fact that the ice is retreating the retreat is accelerating as we watch it, and that there is a expectation that that retreat will continue. So that's high confidence. Accelerating retreat will continue. Only medium confidence in how much it will accelerate. We don't know if it's gonna go from contributing 4% to 5% or 6% or 10% or 20 or 50. But we know it's not going to two or one. We know exceptionally well, high confidence, retreat of the ice sheet is accelerating. What we can't say is how rapidly yet. Is this, is this something that further research might give you, uh, uh, elevate that from a medium confidence to a high confidence? That's the purpose of this project. That's why the US and the UK and you know, 100 of us are spending our um, you know, holidays there year after year because we are trying to achieve that confidence. Um, it's a lot easier, of course, to have high confidence in what we can see today than in predictions. But if we, the type of scientists that work in the field, gather enough data, we can help improve the models of the future behavior. Because those future, the bit, models of future behavior are calibrated, they're defined by using the facts we observe about the past. We, use the past as a way to calibrate our understanding of the future. So the more we know, um, the more we can get confident. Yes, that's absolutely our scientific purpose out there. 
Dr. Wellner, thank you very much for this uh, fascinating insights into a very interesting topic. Uh, thank you very much.